when we talk about the new creation, we don't talk, we don't mean the the new physicality. We are not talking about your physicality. We're not talking about your height. We're not talking about the complexion of your skin. We're not talking about uh, the outward appearance. We're not talking about your body. It's about your spirituality. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the time of the day when you are watching me. This is Beholding Christ Show. My name is Ben Fetcher, and I'm excited to be back here with you. And uh, I'm so happy that it's all about Jesus. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about what we do or what we don't do. It's about what he did. You know, we live in the days of what Christ has done, not in the days of what we do for God, but in the days of what Christ has done. Because he has done all things that we will ever require for life and godliness. So I welcome you this wonderful moment for the next few minutes as we go into the scriptures and see ourselves as we are seen by the scriptures. The, the other time we were together, uh, we, we said that the real definition of the man in Christ is by God and God alone. We can be defined by so many things around us, but the true and the perfect definition of us is found in Christ and Christ alone. Outside Christ, there is no definition of who man is because it is in Christ we live, it is in him we move, it is in him you and I have our being. Praise be to God. And today I want us to look at a very, very wonderful scripture that uh, I know you've heard of this verse for quite some time. And I want us to get back into that scripture in the, the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 17. Already some of you already know what it says, but I would like us to read uh, uh, quietly and uh, step by step and verse by verse word by word, so that we can get the context of what is written there. It is in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. So today we are talking about uh, the man in Christ. The man in Christ. Who is the man in Christ? How is the man in Christ defined? What should we know about the man in Christ? And now let's get into the scriptures and uh, devour the word. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ. And uh, when we were in school, uh, we were taught that there is no uh, true statement or true story that should start with the word therefore. So it means that uh, these are continuation of something that Paul was talking about in the previous verses. And therefore, maybe I can start from uh, verse 14. It says, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because with us judge that if one died for all, then were all dead. So he's talking about the death of Christ. And if Christ died for all, then we were all considered dead. Praise God. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died and, uh, for them and rose again. Verse 16 says, Whence, uh, Wherefore henceforth, I'm reading from the King James, know we no man after the flesh. Yeah, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now, Henceforth, know we him no more. He's talking about, uh, about them not knowing Christ after the flesh. You know, before this, they knew Jesus after the flesh. Like now when he was walking here, when we read the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we see Jesus Christ walking here on earth. And the people that were there knew him according to the flesh. They knew a Jesus who got thirsty. They knew a Jesus who got tired. They knew a Jesus that was in the flesh. Praise be to God. But now after the resurrection, when Paul comes into the picture, he says that we know no man after the flesh. Even Christ, we no longer know him after the flesh. Though we knew him after the flesh, we know him no longer after the flesh. Why? Because verse 17 says, if any man be in Christ. So, Today, not only do we know Christ after the Spirit, but we also know the people who are born again, not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Praise be to God. What happened is that when we believed, when you and I believed in Christ, we were placed in a place called in Christ. So the, the in Christ place is not just a statement. It's not just a phrase. It is a place called in Christ. Hallelujah. Uh, and uh, 
we were, you know, the Bible says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, that he has conveyed us, he has translated us. Other translations say he has transferred us. We were in a specific place, but because of Christ and his death, we were shifted. There is a shifting that happened. There is a transfer that happened. There is a translation that uh, happened where we were, we were moved from one place, from point A to point B. Maybe before we go to verse 17, uh, let me get you back uh, to the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 1. Uh, verse 12 and 13. Colossians 1, verse 12 and 13. Listen, he says, Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. My verse of, of emphasis is in verse 13. He says, Who has delivered us? Who has delivered us? Who has delivered us from the king, uh, from the power of darkness and has translated us? into the kingdom of his dear son. Let me read for you with the amplified version. It says, the father has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control and the dominion of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Look at this. He took us out or he brought us out from the kingdom of darkness from the kingdom of, and the control of the of the of the kingdom that is of darkness and he brought us in so not only have we been delivered from darkness we have been delivered and translated it's not a one uh, a one way thing it's a two way thing delivered and translated you belonged to the, uh, to the world of sin. Now you have been delivered and you have been brought into the world of righteousness. You belonged to the world of the, where the devil had, the, the, uh, had dominion or where the devil was ruling. And you have been brought into a new world where Christ is the one who is reigning. So it's not just deliverance from sin. It's not just deliverance from sickness. It's not just deliverance from the kingdom of darkness. It is to be delivered and to be translated. He says, giving thanks unto the Father who, who has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the, uh, of, the, in, of the saints in the light and has delivered us. Let me read for you uh, using the message Bible. It says, God rescued us from the dead end alleys and dark dungeons. He set us up in the kingdom of the Son he loves so, so much. So it's a two thing that happened, that he delivered us, then he translated us into his dear, uh, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. So there is a place called the, uh, the, the place of darkness, the place of sin, the place of disobedience, the place of the, where the enemy of the devil takes control or controls situations. And there is another place called the place of Christ, the place of righteousness, the place where we reign in Christ. So this is what happened to everyone that believed in Christ. They were translated. They were translated. They were delivered out and translated into the kingdom of his dear son. That is Christ Jesus. So anyone that has believed in Christ, as John 1 verse 12 says, everyone that has accepted Christ, believed Christ, you are no longer out there in the place of sin, but you are in here in the place called Christ. And that is why now we are talking about if any man, now we can go back to uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, listen, he says, therefore, if any man, you know, anytime I read the Bible and I see the Bible describing any man, I, I, I rejoice because I know I am included in the any man. You are included in the any man. He didn't say that if a believer or if a bishop or if a reverend or if the church goer or if a Christian is in Christ. No, he says, if any man be in Christ. So for your information, Christ did not come to die for Christians. Christ came to die for the world. John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, 
but have eternal life. He didn't say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that when Christians believe in him, no, no, no. He said that whoever, so when the Bible talks of any man, it talks about whoever, I am glad because it's talking about me. Praise be to God. So he says, if any man, if you are in Christ, how do you get into Christ? By believing in the finished works of Christ, by believing that Jesus died and he was buried and he rose from the dead because of your sins. So if any man be in Christ, he is an, a new Creature, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I want us to go for a break, a short break, and we'll be right back at, after the break and we'll delve much more into this so that we can see what this verse really means. So see you after the break. Here you are at uh, Dubai Mall. Now you see, uh -huh. with 150. Yes. Now I am planning. It's my first time we have never been out. I'm even scared if that money will be enough. So both of you are single and searching. I wasn't searching. Ah. Uh -uh. So I wasn't. was searching. <laughs> I don't know about you. Hey. <laughs> I wasn't searching. I think he told me if you are serious, mm -hmm. go and see the pastor. All right, welcome back. This is Beholding Christ Show. My name is Ben Fetcher, and I am grateful to God. We say that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. That is what we've just said. And now, I want us to look closely into what that part of the Bible is talking about. Because in this verse are hidden treasures of wisdom, treasures of what Christianity is all about. Praise be to God. So, number one, we've realized that if any man be in Christ, and we have explained how a man gets into Christ, is by believing in the gospel. And what is the gospel? The good news. It's not about you and how God is taking you to hell. There is no good news in the stories about hell. It's about how God loves you, how Christ died for you. It's about how he took away your sins. It's about how Christ died your death. It's about how he was separated from God so that you can be uh, you can be in fellowship with God. The good news is all about everything that God has done that is good for you. There is no goodness, there is no good news when I tell you about hell. So if you know many people have have been uh, have been uh, listening to messages that, that are telling them about hell, how God is angry with them, how God wants to punish them, how God hates them because of their sins. But that is not the gospel. The gospel is simply the good news of God's grace. Actually, the good news or the gospel is almost too good to be true because it talks about what Christ has done for you and not what you do for him. So when you believe in that, you are the man we are talking about, the man in Christ. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. And now I want us to proceed so that we can see what uh, this man in Christ entails. Let us take it up again. 2 Corinthians 5 17 says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The first thing is that he is a new creature. Hallelujah. He is a new species of being. There is a translation that says he has become a new species of being. Let me read from the Amplified. It says, therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old or the previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh has come. The fresh and new has come. Uh, listen to the NLT. The NLT says, what this means is that those who become Christians or those who are in Christ, they become new persons. Now, someone may look at themselves and wonder, hey, before I got born again, I was dark. I'm still dark. Before I got born again, I was tall. I'm still tall. Before I got born again, I was short. I'm still short. And what are you talking about when you say they are, they are a new creation or they are, an, are a new, uh, they have become new persons? species of being. Well, when you talk about the new creation, we don't talk, we don't mean the, the new physicality. We are not talking about your physicality. We're not talking about your height. We're not talking about the complexion of your skin. We're not talking about uh, the outward appearance. We're not talking about your body. If you are big before you got born again, 
even after receiving Christ, you remain to be big. If you are underweight, you remain to be underweight. If you are overweight, you remain to be overweight. Because it's not about the physicality. It's not about your physicality. It's about your spirituality. Praise be to God. And many people tend to think like, uh, I didn't hear, I didn't feel anything when I got born again. I didn't feel anything. Uh, I didn't feel like there was any fire in my, on my head. Nothing really happened in the physical. And they tend to think like, this thing is just there. But this is the truth about it. When you believed in Christ is that your spirit man or your inner man was made alive. The Bible says in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2, of us, uh, let's get there, Ephesians chapter 2, of verse 1. What does the Bible say? And you has he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Ah, he says you are dead in trespasses and sins. There are, the NLT says, once you are dead, doomed forever because of your many sins. So this is what I'm talking about, that before you received Christ or before you believed in the gospel, and even today, if you have not yet believed in the gospel of Christ, the good news of Jesus Christ, you are counted as one whose spirit is dead. And when we talk about death, I know I mentioned this last time, we are not talking about ceasing to exist. We are talking about uh, being separated from God. So when we talk about death, we are talking about being separated from God. This is what we call spiritual death. And now to us who are in, who are in Christ, now he says that we were, we were, notice the tenses, now we have been made alive. We are in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. You have been made alive, but you were dead in trespasses and sins. So now when he talks about us being made a new creature, he's not talking about our physicality. He's not talking about anything physical. He's talking about our spiritual life. In our spirit, we were dead. In other words, we were separated from God. We were not a people. We, were, we had no God. We, we were separated completely from God. But when we believed, we became a new creation. In other words, our spirits were made new. Hallelujah. We receive the newness of life in our spirits. That is to say that now we who were separated from God, when we receive the new life in our spirits, we were made one with God. So when he talks about the new creature, it's a new species of being that never existed. I usually give an example where when we were in, in, uh, in school and we were being taught uh, or you are learning biology, we were taught about uh, the, you know, the, those used to call them the binomial nomenclature, the, the Latin words. And, you know, and we used to say that human beings are homo sapiens. Their, their, species, their species is sapiens. But now when the Bible comes and talks about the believers who are in Christ, it calls them a new creature. If you use the same language, like when we talk about Homo sapiens, we are, talk, we are using the Latin language. Now the Latin language for new creation is Nova Creo, praise be to God. So that is a new species of being that we were not taught when we were learning biology. It's now a spiritual species of being. And what makes it unique is that this species of being is like God. So those who are in Christ, those who believe in Christ, they have received this new species. They have received, they have been made a new species of being, carrying the very DNA of God. Hallelujah. We're getting back to 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. He says, uh, uh, they have be, they are a new creation. That is what I've just explained, that we are a species of being that never existed. So my friend, you are not only homo sapiens. You're not only human. You are beyond human. You are supernatural. You carry the DNA of God. You carry the power of God. You are born of God. You are a son of God. Hallelujah. And this is what uh, this is not how this is what has been missing since the fall of Adam, since the fall of man. This has been missing all along. But because of Christ, God has reestablished 
himself inside us. And now we carry his DNA. We carry his very own life. This is what we call the new creation life. This is what we call the newness of life. The life as God has it. Uh, in English, uh, English lacks word. Because English just calls it life. But there are different kinds of life. There is the suke life, that is P-S-U-C-H-E, suke life, that is the normal human life, the ordinary life of human beings. Then there is the zoe life, which is Z-O-E, which is the God kind of life. So when we believed in Christ, we received zoe. We received the God kind of life. And this is the life that makes God who he is. Praise be to God. So you are not an ordinary man. You are not just uh, an ordinary man from Kisumu, from uh, Nairobi, from Kawangware, uh, from Limuru, from Ghana, from Liberia, from Ethiopia, from US. You are not just an ordinary man. God, you are and you belong to God. You carry the DNA, uh, the DNA of God. You are a new species of being that never existed. The species of being that is above all the uh, all the the powers of the devil, above all principalities, above all the rulers of this world. You carry the DNA of God. And the Bible says that whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. My dear viewer today, I want to tell you as you're listening to me right now, because you are in Christ, you are an overcomer. The Bible calls us more than conquerors. You are not just a normal human being. You carry God inside you, just like Christ was 100% God and 100% human. You also carry the fullness of God. Praise be to God. When people received Christ, they thought that they received junior God. You have not received the junior God. You have received the fullness of God. Hallelujah. For God has found it worthy and acceptable that the fullness of God should dwell in Christ completely. The fullness, the totality of God dwells in Christ. The wholeness of God dwells in Christ. The almightiness, if there is a word like that, if there is none, we create one. The almightiness of God dwells in Christ bodily. And now where is in Christ? Paul says in Colossians 1.27, And this is the mystery that was hidden for ages. Christ in us, the hope of glory. So my viewer today, I am here to remind you that because you are in Christ, you are a new creation. This new creation means you are a species of being that never existed, that carries the DNA of God. It's called the chosen generation. You don't belong to your old generation. You belong to the God kind of generation. And this is where we draw our identity. Remember, this is beholding Christ, where when we see him, we see ourselves. And when we see ourselves in him, we are transformed daily. Hallelujah. I'm excited. I'm blessed by this one. We'll take it up from there. But we are still in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 17, we've just studied about the new creation and that is who you are in Christ. So uh, thank you very much for tuning in to Beholding Christ show. My name is Ben Fetcher and I love you so much. Till next time, God bless you. Amen, amen.